All right, guys. I'm I'm on the second book of Kings. Um, briefly, I'm gonna touch up on uh my last video. I got I keep getting asked when am I gonna finish my testimony, my whole hell testimony. The reason why I haven't when I first made my channel, which was like two months ago, I was just gonna do the testimonies, but I didn't realize that the camera on my on my laptop was so like lame. So I'm trying to save up to get another camera for this laptop because I saved money to get this laptop. Finally got the laptop to make to make my testimony, and then I didn't realize that the um that the camera on here was like so shady. So I'm saving to get a, a new and a camera, and then I'm gonna make an I'm gonna make a, a whole testimony, a better a better one because it needs to be better quality than that. It's not very good. Anyway, so I keep getting asked that. I'm waiting for a camera. That's why I haven't done finished my testimony stuff. Uh, but I felt like doing the the ball one because I was talking about Baal so much in the Bible stories. Anyway, so back to the second book of Kings. Uh, if you guys are interested, you guys should be interested. Please check out my Bible. Um, if you look, go to my playlists, okay? If you go to my playlists, there's the Bible stories of the Bible. I'm doing the whole. I'm trying to do the whole Bible. I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but I'm trying to do the whole Bible. Anyway, so I'm in the second book of Kings, and I'm going to tell you what's going on. Um, so if you read the first book of Kings, Israel and Judah split, okay? The Israelites split. Ten, ten tribes of Israel were, uh, are in Israel. Two tribes are in Judah. You can already see the split happening with King David. This is why there's Jews now, right? And Because um, Ju Ju Judea became Jews later, Okay. The, the word Jew has is not in the Bible yet. They're called the tribe of Judah. Okay? And the, they started fighting because they are worshipping Baal, Baal. I keep calling them Baal. Baal. Um, but, and so, um, basically, they got some black magic. They're performing black magic. And so, of course, God, when you do that stuff, um, God, uh, you don't stay, you don't, it starts making problems. Okay? Anyway, so they split up. And on the second book of Kings, what ends up happening is they God keeps trying to send them prophets and stuff to get to get them out of this deception. Okay, he keeps, he sends them Elijah, Elisha, and other prophets. And what ends up happening is um, there's about twenty kings in Israel and twenty kings in Judah. Eight of the ones in Judah end up being good, but all of them in Israel end up being bad. Okay, all of them, all twenty. That's what these the books of first and second kings are all about, and when it ends up happening in the second book of kings at the tour, at, the, at the end of it, okay, it keeps talking about all these kings, which ones were good, which ones were bad, why they were bad, all of them that were bad that they were worshiping Baal, that that was the and it named some other ones in there. I'll have to make different videos on them, like Asterisk and Malcolm, of course Moloch, okay, and. Basically, what happened was God, he started separating them. He started separating from Israel all completely because they were not listening to his warnings. And they were not listening to the prophets Elijah and Elisha. So, Assyrians, um, in 930 BC, this, the Assyri Assyrians took over Samaria. Was At that time, it was Samaria was the capital. And so Israel got taken over by the Assyrian army. Okay, they got kicked out. No more. No, all the tribes got kicked out. No, they they disinherited Jerusalem. They disinherited um, their own land. Uh, sorry, Judah. They lasted another hundred and thirty years because they had eight good kings that kept them going for a little bit. But still, they ended up falling. I'm gonna get into that later. But I'm trying to just do an overview of these books. So the Babylonians came and took over the the tribe of Judah, kicked them out of Jerusalem. Okay, they neither one of them have their own land anymore. They they got got they all got um uh cast into ba the Babylonians. Okay, the Babylonian Empire. This is known as the fall of Babylon. Right, it's bad. Anyway, so that's what's going on, and I'm gonna go into these little stories now and tell you some of the stuff that's going on. So, the, uh, this is what's happening right now. Okay, so in the first book of Kings, 
Elijah, uh, he's on he's on the first book of King. He, he's introduced in the first book. He was a prophet. If you don't remember, he cat he brought. This is very important because all this stuff's in the book of Revelations, you guys. It's, it's it it's very important. So, uh, in the first book of Kings, he brought he brought a drought. Okay, Elijah brought a drought, so everyone at this point is very hungry and starving to death. I'm not okay. So, and there was like a bat, like a battle you could say with him and the the Baal worshippers. Okay, he brought down fire from the heavens to uh, uh, light this like sacrifice on fire. Okay, and that's important. Remember this. Um, okay, so what happens in the beginning of the second book of Kings is Elijah, Elijah's hanging out, and this evil king of Israel, because Israel's pretty evil at this point because they're they because of Ahab and Jezebel, they've been worshiping Baal. Uh, still, even though they killed all the prophets, even though Elijah killed all the Baal prophets, they keep worshiping worshiping this thing. Anyway. Back and forth. So some okay ones, but the no, no, most of, no. This is Israel. Israel's all bad right now, but a lot. Most of the even the tribe of Judah end up doing the same thing. Okay. Okay. So what happens is so this this King Ahaziah, there's a bunch of kings in this book. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but he falls down a lattice. He knows Elijah is a miracle worker, so he sends his men to go get Elijah to come help heal him. What happens is. Uh, Elijah doesn't want to go help this evil king because he's a Baal worshiper. But he he got injured. Isaiah fell down like a lattice and he hurt himself. So anyway, so his king, this king, went, goes to try to arrest Elijah, like force force him to go help him. And what happens is, this happens three times. He sends fifty men to go get him. Elijah says, uh, "If I'm a man of God, may my uh, God burn you guys up like my fire from the heavens come and burn you." It does. They come and get him again the second time. Fifty more men, same thing. Third time, fifty more men. No, sorry. The third time he goes with them because he feels bad because this, the these this this captain of these armies he he's like, dude, I know you're gonna burn us again. But this king, he, he's going to kill me. So Elijah feels far, sorry for him and goes back and, and tries to go help this um, Ahaziah. But my point is, is with this fire. This fire is in the book of Revelations, you guys, okay? So anyway, Elijah. So Elijah, it, he gets introduced. He's trying to, he's getting old. So he's trying to pass on his ministry to Elisha. Okay, it was, it's confusing because it's J, but the new Elijah was is with an SH. And there's a reason why these guys have similar names. I'm going to get to that way later in the book of Revelations. I know why. I think I know why anyway. I have, a, I have my own theory, but um, but in Hebrew, they don't sound the same. But in English, they sound the same. Anyway, so Elisha is coming to the scene. And let's see. Okay, so Elijah met with Elisha, and he was going to pass on the ministry to him because Elijah was getting old, okay? And God really needed these prophets to come and try to help these tribes because they were falling, right? And they did try. They kind of succeeded, but mostly failed because these guys were not, they didn't, they kept doing what they wanted. So there's Elijah and Elisha. So they start the uh, Elisha starts following Elijah, and what happened? This is very important. Okay, so Elijah, uh, so Elisha asks to asks to be like he wants to follow in the ministry afterwards, and he says yes. Okay, and he also also he asks for a double portion of his he asks for a double portion of his of Elijah's spirit. Okay. And he said, like, if you see me when I, when I leave this earth, then you will be granted this thing you wish. God will grant you this. Okay? Now, this is very important. So, a whirlwind of fire and chariots came 
and took Elijah to he- to paradise, to heaven. Okay? And he threw down his mantle. That means he's passing on, like, his uh, prophecies and stuff. Okay? He's passing on this ministry. Okay? This is very important. Elijah did not die and go to heaven. Okay? He didn't die and go to heaven. In Hebrews and the Revelations, this is important. It is appointed for every man to die once. And after this, the judgment. Okay? Notice how Elijah, this and two people hasn't two people in the scripture have not have not died, technically. Their their bodies didn't die. It was Enoch and it was Elijah. Elijah. Okay. And he, the Jews believe Elijah is going to come back. Uh, the Christians believe Elijah is going to come back. Okay. At the end of time. This is serious. Okay. Uh, and even the mu- Muslims do. Okay. I'm going to try to tell you how all this is going to get really confusing. And that's exactly why in this book, everyone has the same names. They're, dude, they, he did it, God did that on purpose as a warning. I'll get into that later. Okay. So, he gets carried away. I'm a, I'm, my next video, I'm going to try to bring up this prophecy and stuff a little bit. Okay. So, Elijah performs 28 miracles. He gets a double portion of Elijah's spirit because he got to see him depart from the earth. Okay. And so, <clears throat> so that's what's happening right now. Um, so, Elijah is going around. He's... He is performing miracles. He's a he's a, he's a he's a man of God. He performs a bunch of miracles. Um, some of them were very similar to Elijah's, and I think that's important too. But for now, I'll just gonna say that he performed a performing a bunch of miracles. Miracles. He just like Elijah, he brought a little boy back to life. Okay, and uh, he also split the waters like Moses, kind of. Okay. And uh, he also cured this uh, Naaman from his leprosy. All right, all right. So, so that's what's going on right now with Elijah. All right. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about some of these other kings real fast. Um. Okay. All right. So. What's going on now is all these kings happen. Uh, uh, this is this really evil queen named Athaliah. She literally almost kills the line of David, which is Satan's plan. Okay, when Satan found out found out what tribe when fa- Satan found out what tribe Jesus was coming from, which was, which was Judah, he tried to get rid of all the tribe of Judah. Okay. And just like he tried to get rid of all the pro- the correct pro- prophets, if in the first book of Kings, all Jezebel almost killed every single prophet, but Elijah escaped. Okay, same thing happened with this queen, Athaliah. It's just, you guys, if you look at these parallel stories, it's creepy. This Athaliah queen, she basically went into a murderous rampage and killed all of her even though she wasn't from the tribe of judah she was nuts she went and killed um she had her man and killed all the bloodline heirs left from the from the line of jude from the line of david king david he she killed all almost every single one because this was satan's plan he's trying to get rid of the bloodline once he found out which bloodline it was he tried to get rid of the bloodline, but this 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 maid, okay, she grabbed one of the kids by when they're killing them all, and she ran and hid this kid inside the house, inside the castle, for years. Okay, she she secretly rose up this little kid, this baby, just like it's the same thing that happened to Jesus. Jesus, when when um the Herod and stuff, when they um uh found out. That Jesus was born, Satan tried to get him again. He killed all the firstborn of from Bethlehem, right? He got he, he killed all those kids trying to get Jesus killed, Satan. Okay, so this is what happened to this little boy. It's same storyline. Elijah was the only prophet that survived that attack from Jezebel. 
this baby was the only survival from David's bloodline from this attack from Athaliah. And when Athaliah finally died, they literally crowned this seven-year-old the king. Because he was the only bloodline from Jesus. This is the only... Luckily, do you, you guys have any, any idea how close we were to like losing Jesus' bloodline? There would have been no Jesus. It had to have been. It had to come from this bloodline. Had to. Um, and it almost happened. This, but luckily, this maid got this little boy and saved him. Okay, he and he ended up being king for a while. Okay, I wanted to point him out because, luckily, you guys don't even know how close we. Everybody, everybody died would have gone straight to hell if it wasn't for this kid surviving. Okay. Because Jesus had to come from this kid, right? Eventually. Not not right now, right now, right now, but eventually. So, I really wanted to bring up this specific king, okay? And this specific coincident kind of Jezebel story, alright? Alright, so, <clears throat> all, I really needed to bring up this, too, from the Book of Numbers. If you guys remember, uh, Moses and the bronze snake and the cross... I'll try to put the link below from that video. I'll have to go look it up. Um, so, in the book of Numbers, they were uh, the Israelites were arguing about their complaining about the food, and God got mad and He sent serpents to bite them. Okay, and he, and then Moses grabbed the, one of the snakes and put it on a stick as a symbol for Jesus as a as. <laughs> I don't like to use word. Uh, yeah, he, it's supposed to be a represent Jesus, and if you said, and the God said, if you look at it, it will heal you. And this is the symbol they use now for the medical field. Okay, there's meaning in that. Big meaning, big hints. I'm gonna gonna skip over that part. Sorry, I'm burping. Um, but there's another layered meaning in this. Okay, these churches are just symbols, are just metaphors. I'm gonna use the word metaphor, not symbols. A metaphors for churches now, okay? I'm, I'm not kidding. When you read the Bible, in uh, uh, the book of Revelation, it talks, it talks about all these churches. Well, these churches don't exist anymore. No, they do. They're the same churches. Just like these names are the same th same person person or different people, but they have the same name. Just, there's a reason for God wrote it like that, okay? These people, the devil will change people's names, but it's... Or keep the same name, but they're different, or they're the same. It's confusing, I know, but I'm trying. I, I'm, this is a, an example of this, okay, of how some things are the same person, but they have different names. But sometimes it's the other way around, and you have to pay attention to that. And the end times, okay, you have to study the Bible. That's why in this book, every the names are so confusing because they're si sometimes it's literally the same guy, but they change his name. That happens right through the whole Bible too, okay. So in the book of Numbers, this it was it was a, a metaphor for uh, it was a real thing that happened, okay. But these people later in this book of Kings, because they are worshiping Baal and they are idol worshiping, which you're not supposed to be doing, they got corrupted and they took this symbol and they started worshiping the symbol as a different as a different god. They but gave it a different name. It did not become Jesus. It didn't become the Messiah anymore. It became a different demon. It, his name was uh, Nish, Nehushtan. Okay, it, they totally twisted it into worshiping the devil. All right, that's it, God knew that. That's why it's a serpent too. Okay, and it keeps going. This evil keeps going. The devil will use. Books out of the Bible, people out of the Bible, stories out of the Bible to confuse you, to get you to worship him. A good, the perfect example of that is Mary. Okay? You are not supposed to be worshiping Mary. Okay? This, this is, became an idol. Okay? She, the devil took a person out of the Bible, an innocent person, and he turned it and you're worshiping one of his demons. This is not Mary, you guys. This is this is Asterisk, this is Isis, this is, you keep changing the name, but it's the same demonic entity, okay? Uh, it's the same demonic entity. Ugh. It's a trick, okay? The devil will use stories and people out of the Bible to trick you. That's why you gotta read it and study it and believe in Jesus only. 
Don't believe in priests. Don't believe in your traditions. Because th the devil loves loves when you guys get stuck into a tradition. Okay? And you don't actually study the Bible for yourself and read it. And believe in Jesus. Not the Pope. Not a priest. Not Muhammad. Okay? Or whatever. <sighs> Alright. So, that's what's happening right now. I'm going to try to wrap it up. Alright, so... Another story I wanted to point out. Um, if you read the book, Book of Kings, the the Solomon's Temple is slowly, as the people are starting to break off and start worshiping Baal and worshiping Asterisk and the names a bunch of other ones, as they as as the tribes fall apart, you start to notice this temple is starting to fall apart meaning in that right it's a metaphor and it's symbolic of what's really going on but it really is happening too okay if you're reading it the temple they keep having to take part the people keep raiding the temple and they keep having to take the temple apart to sell because they're trying to bribe like these other kings to not take them over okay because they're losing god's power because they keep doing they keep worshiping Baal. okay uh, we are still worshiping Baal today, okay? They are worshiping Moloch. We still worship Moloch today. They don't have the same names, but they might have the same names. But the, when you do abortion, you're worshiping Moloch, and you're giving that power to Moloch, and it goes over everyone. And it's not, oh, well, I don't, I don't do abortion, so I, it's not my problem. No, you guys, this energy goes over everyone, okay? And also in this book, book I wanted, really wanted to bring up, and I totally forgot. Like Astrus, um, it's she's like when people were worshiping her, they would carve like women, naked women, or naked idols out of wood. Okay, that's why God said not to make idols even out of wood, and or groves like like Bohemian Grove is like a huge asterisk. Same demon, okay. Uh, they still do this, okay, but you like. All these, the, the, we, everyone still worships these things, okay? They didn't go anywhere, okay? And so anyway, the final, the last step was when there was this king, um, after the tribe of Israel got kicked out, the Assyrians kicked them out, the Judea lasted a little bit longer, okay? There were some good kings, there were some bad ones, most of them were bad, but the worst one was uh, Manasseh, I want to say. I, um, he literally started putting Moloch statues and Baal statues and doing sacrifice, human sacrifices, ch child sacrifices in the house of God. So at this point, God was like, okay, then he, 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 he was very angry, obviously. They, so he let, <laughs> so he let their enemies take them because they kept worshiping the enemy anyway, right? So, the Babylonians came. God let them do it. Okay. He let the Babylonians come and they took over Jerusalem. Okay. It, he let it happen because these, and he tried to stop them. He tried to send more prophets to them. He tried to send better kings, but they just kept falling. They kept falling. They wouldn't listen. They kept, they, you know what I mean? They're, you guys, I'm trying to explain how like this uh, energy works. This energy goes over everyone, and you start losing your connection to God because your connection to these evil things are stronger, okay? And he respects your free will. If you keep doing it, he's going to let you. He's, he's going to give you what you've been doing, okay? And when you die, he's really going to give you what you've been doing, okay? Um, the word punishment is uh, comes from is the original meaning. I don't remember if it was in Greek or Hebrew. It means to be cut off. Punishment means to be cut off. You're cut off from God completely when you die and go to hell. And I'm not kidding. 99% of people are going to this place now. That's how bad it is. Okay. It's terrible now. Like It's the end times now. Okay. Um. So when you die and go to hell, there's it's the complete hell is the complete cut off absence from God. You think that's a, that not a big deal? It's absolutely terrible, ter horrifying, agony. 
Okay. This place is terrible. Okay. I, I'm going to have to do my testimony another, another time. But, um, when you, so this is a hint to this, okay? He, they kept trying to, they kept cutting off themselves off from God, even though he kept reaching out to them, but then he gave them what they wanted, okay? That happens when you die. He, you keep ignoring God and it, keep trying to cut yourself off from him. He's going to give you your free will wish. You use your free will to cut out and try to keep yourself away from him. He's going to cut your, uh, cut you offer him and it's, I'm gonna tell you right now that is it's horrible and it's forever okay it's unbelievable agony to be cut off from God you don't don't even there are no human experiences to even compare it to okay but I'll save it for another time but you guys please um my next video I'm gonna try to do this Moses last Elijah prophecy and the revelations since um, on the book of Kings, so I'm in, maybe that'll be probably be in my next video, okay? And then I'll probably do another continuation of the Bible um, later in the week. But anyway, um, um, yep. So just think about this stuff, guys. It's serious, and see you guys later. I hope.